Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. A distobuccal free gingival graft procedure will be demonstrated for this 72-year-old patient. The hygienic phase of his periodontal treatment has been completed more than a month ago. The distobuccal aspect of the last mandibular molar is often a difficult area to treat periodontally due to the lack of attached gingiva. The buccal mucosa joins the marginal gingiva of the mandibular third molar. A free gingival graft will be used to create at least a narrow strip of attached gingiva. The radiograph indicates a slight bone loss at the mesial aspect of the tip molar. However, superimposition of the external oblique ridge prevents a more precise evaluation. There is a four millimeter pocket at the mesial surface and a three to four millimeter crevice depth on the buccal aspect. There is a pad of soft tissue in the retromolar area and a four to five millimeter pseudo pocket due to the hyperplastic distolingual tissue. The tip of the periodontal probe indicates the location of the incisions for the distal wedge surgery. An Orban knife is used to make the two incisions in the retromolar area. The tip of the knife is directed towards the lingual border of the alveolar process and the first incision is extended from the distolingual aspect of the tooth to the ascending ramus of the mandible. The second incision is made perpendicular to the surface of the retromolar triangle. It is extended distally from the distobuccal aspect of the tooth to join the first incision. The retromolar tissues are very flexible and difficult to incise. The up and down sawing movements of the knife facilitate completion of the incision down to the alveolar process. A hemostat is used to grasp the distal wedge of the retromolar tissue, which is dissected loose from the periosteum with an Orban knife. The distobuccal collar of hyperplastic free gingival tissue is excised with a barred Parker number 12B blade. The excision of the free gingiva is completed with an Orban knife. The Orban knife is also used to dissect the mucosal soft tissues away from the periosteum over the alveolar process. This initiates the preparation of the bed for the distobuccal graft. A vertical incision at the mesiobuccal will allow the buccal mucosa to be moved away from the tooth in order to provide space later for the free gingival graft. The buccal surface of the tooth is plain with a curette. The base of the gingival crevice is also curetted to remove all epithelial remains. A piece of tin foil has been shaped to form a pattern for the graft. The tin foil is extended buccally about one and one half millimeters beyond the border of the external oblique ridge.
This tinfoil pattern is placed on the edentulous pellet in an area with a minimal amount of fat and glandular tissues. An incision is made along the border of the tinfoil, extending below the mucosal surface, not more than one to one and one half millimeters. This incision can be made with either a Bard Parker number 12B blade or an Orban knife. The graft is dissected free from the underlying connective tissue using a Bard Parker number 12B blade. The graft should be about one to one and one half millimeters thick. An Orban knife is used to free the graft. The graft is placed on a piece of gauze, which has been moistened with sterile saline solution. Scissors are used to trim the connective tissue side of the graft to obtain a smooth surface, which will allow maximum contact against the recipient site when the graft is transplanted. This trimming will also remove glandular elements and fat components, which may have been included in the graft inadvertently. The graft is now ready for transplantation. It must be kept moist until it is placed over the recipient site. The donor site in the pellet is covered with a thin layer of periodontal surgical dressing. This dressing is covered with a piece of plastic foil to prevent the dressing from sticking to the denture. The graft bed has been prepared by dissecting the buccal mucosa free from the periosteum over the alveolar process as far buccally as the external oblique ridge. This is the maximum extent buccally that one can hope to establish attached gingiva. The graft fits well to the recipient site. Pulling on the buccal mucosa does not induce movement of the graft. The graft may be extended slightly beyond the external oblique ridge since there will always be some shrinkage of the graft. The graft is again placed on a moist gauze, while an ethoflex suture is passed through the distal end to facilitate suturing in the mouth. The distal aspect of the graft has been sutured to the lingual wall of the distal wedge incision. The suture needle is carefully placed to the mesial border of the graft. When the suture is tied, it holds the graft in contact with the mesial surface of the molar and in close approximation to the underlying graft bed. Because there was a lack of attached gingiva at the mesial aspect of the molar, the graft was extended mesially to create an area of attached gingiva, which will be contacted by a fixed partial denture pontic. Next, the graft is placed in direct contact with the periosteal bed. The graft has been held firmly in position for four or five minutes using gauze moistened with sterile saline. It fits well to the recipient bed, and the surgical site is ready for the application of a protective dressing. In order to prevent infection, 3% acromyosin ointment is placed over the graft and the sutures. A piece of tin foil has been cut and shaped to surround the tooth like a collar. This will cover and protect the area of surgery. A strip of periodontal surgical dressing is applied over the tin foil. This dressing holds the graft in close adaptation to the graft bed. 
the dressing is removed after one week. Although the external surface appears to be necrotic, the undersurface has healed to the underlying tissues. A new periodontal dressing is applied following debridement of the area. It is left in place for another week. Six weeks post-operatively, we can see the narrow band of attached gingiva on the buccal aspect and an adequate zone of attached gingiva distobuccally. This view shows the zone of attached gingiva, which has been created at the distal aspect. The distobuccal free gingival graft technique has served its purpose of creating attached gingiva adjacent to this third molar. The prognosis of this tooth as a fixed partial denture abutment has been greatly improved. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.